Okay. This, okay, and this is the instrumentation one. Um, okay. Instrument integration and storytelling. You need any more? No. Okay. It's such a great, a great motif. I notice you use that all the time in your stories. It's such a great. <laughs>
waiting. It's 1224. Hustle all the way down to the band room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What does it start? 130? Uh, it starts at 220. 220. All right. Well, we're just waiting. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you want to go over or do you want to stick to the 250? Let's ask her if it's okay to go over. Okay. I don't mind. Okay. I know. Plenty of material here. That was very stifle. Imagine he's almost like dreaming. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> we got a winner. <laughs> we have a winner. We have a disciple boy. <laughs> that is precisely the case. Oh, 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 boy. I'll sleep like a baby tonight. That's okay. Yeah, you are. Okay, here she is. I can hear you, yes. Perfect, that's great. We have good volume, so I'm just gonna adjust the camera a little bit. We have about two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 kids in here as well. So they're in the band room. Hello, musicians, how are you all? Good? Good. <laughs> good, glad to hear that. Are we ready to begin? Um, I have been asked to describe to you as buddy musicians what it means to add music to stories. How many of you have ever heard this particular musical phrase? All right. What would Star Wars be without John Williams's amazing score? Right away, you know that Darth Vader is about to appear and that something very dire is about to happen. What that is called is a musical light motif. Can you say that word? Light motif? Light motif. It's spelled L E I T M O T I F. A light motif is a musical idea in a story that signals either an emotion or a character. The word was invented by a famous composer named Richard Wagner, who wrote operas, long operas. And he would, for every time one of his heroic characters appeared, he would include a leitmotif, just like John Williams did in Star Wars for the principal characters. Luke Skywalker had a leitmotif, and that's how the music sort of helps the listener's emotions carry on. Now, let's say that I was saying something very nice and pleasant to you. However, I was playing this music and I was saying, oh, the flowers are blooming. It's a beautiful, sunny day. However, you would know that something's wrong. Yes? Or something's coming up. Because this little motif, how does that make you feel when you hear it? Anybody have a thought? How listening to this strange little bit of music that I'm playing here on my 12 string guitar. What emotion does that make you feel? Oh, come on up to 
the speaker. You can go to the speaker. No. Yeah. That's okay. You have to share your thoughts. What? Okay, tell me what you're saying. Okay, we're gonna work on that. Come on up, and then you can tell. Okay, just to, you can speak to Audrey here. All right, I'll give you another light motif, but let me know how this makes you how this makes you feel. <laughs> So th that is what I would call happy music. Would you agree? Oh, yes. yes, it's happy music. Perfect, happy music. One thing about happy music, is, the more you study it, is that it tends to be, but not always, but usually, in what is called a major key. Uh, do you, have you learned about major and minor keys yet? You know, you play a song in minor, you play a song in major, or there are moments in each one. If you are adding music to a story and you want to make your listener feel happy, the chances are good you want to add something in the major keys. If, however, Trying to make your listeners uh, feel something else. You play in the minor key. Can you hear the difference between the major and the minor? Yeah. Here's a major. The minor. Play that for you again. Major and minor. So if I want to indicate in a story that something scary is taking place, like a storm, or someone is being chased, or something bad is happening, usually I'll play in the minor key. However, if I want to make sure that my hero or heroine is okay, I would play in the major. That is one of the main tricks in urging your audience to feel feelings when you're telling a story. And if you go back and you watch any movie that you're nowadays watching, pay attention to the music. When a movie is made, the story is first written out by the screenwriter. Then the director takes the actors and has the actors do all their parts and films it. But there's no music. And it's only at the very end, once the entire movie is made with no music at all, that they give that movie to the composer. And the composer then writes the music and maps right along with the story. And you'll see that, you know, if there's a happy moment happening, the chances are really good. The composer will be doing something uplifting or beautiful, something that is meant to make your heart soar. But if the composer wants to make you worried about something, so the chances will, the, the composer will use minor keys and, and, and music that is not particularly happy. And it's funny how our human emotions just flow along with it. I love movies and I love listening to the music that uh, movie makers make with music. Does that make sense so far? Can I, um, I'm the band teacher. I just wanted to say our sixth grade band knows us pretty well because right now they're playing two songs that are in minor, The Tempest, which is a great storm, and uh. another one called The Revenge of the Dust Bunnies, which is about dust bunnies avoiding the vacuum cleaner. 
And then we've just started our song for friends, which is in a major key and they're working on their B flat major scale right now. So sixth grade band kids especially can connect to what you're saying. In fifth grade, we just got started, but that's gonna be fun for them to start making those connections. That's fantastic. So therefore uh, you're experiencing pieces in the major and minor keys and just listen to your emotions and what, when you listen to the music, the music is meant to make you feel. Another trick that certainly I use when I'm uh, telling stories is tempo. If I want to start a, a fairy tale for children and I want it to be a bit uplifting and bouncy and happy, I'll start it like this. And, and then we'll begin the story. Uh, you know, once long ago there lived a little shepherd. Every day his shepherds do, he would lead his sheep out to the sunny meadows where they would graze on sweet grass and every afternoon he would bring them home. But this little shepherd was small and puny and mean. And if I drop down into the minor there, immediately you as the listener say, oh, this is not all sunny after all. And it sort of prepares you for the story that's about to take place. Another idea item is of course, tempo. How fast is the music going? How would you describe this tempo? Anyone? Yes. Yeah, it out. Slow. In musical termination or terms that would be probably be called lento. Slow. Yes. Um, and uh, what that makes a person feel is that at this point of a story or a piece of music, there is no rush at all. And it's like wandering through a meadow of flowers or something like that. And two people say, one person said calming and one person said steady. Absolutely, calming and steady. I love that. And that's exactly what that music is meant to convey. This, some of this music I'm using is from a long story of mine called The Odyssey. And you actually have a recording of this at your school, uh, which you can listen to. It's four hours long. And if you, you will, you'll remember this musical theme probably because it figures whenever in The Odyssey, which is a highly adventurous story, things are all right again that the sailors on the sea have found a bit of peace and quiet. However, if I want a, a different sort of emotion, I can use tempo. These are fast notes. Now, if I play those, how do those notes make you feel? What does it make you expect? Shout out, healthy, intense, scary, intense, scary, nervous. nervous. What else? Yes. Something's chasing you. Ooh. Ah, I love it. Yes, yeah, scary, nervous. Something is facing you. Uh, this is uh these are just some scales in in that same minor key that i was playing for you earlier and in the odyssey for instance there's a great storm that comes and and, and it, it blows the ships far off course and so i'll use big old chords and big old what are called double stops like these in order to try to convey those emotions. So, it, uh, but this rapidamente, as it's called playing, it just tends to heat the uh, listener up and go, oh, what is going on now? Oh my goodness, oh dear, something, something is happening that is very different from How does this make you feel? Mm 
was really hard to hear. Oh, it is? Oh. It was super hard to hear. You could right. the accent. You could only hear the accent. Let me try to, here's another example of the same sort of thing. Did you hear that? Something bad is just like just ending. Yes, and what I'm doing. I got a couple here. Yep. Something bad's just starting. Something bad's just starting. I was going to say that. Yep. Yes. Oh, when Mario goes into the tomb. Oh, when Mario goes into the underground, and Mario. Sure. The shark is coming. The shark is coming. Oh yes. Yeah, the shark is coming. Like a chase scene or or like a war. Excellent. What I'm doing is doing two things. I'm using what is called atonality. You see how these notes, they're not really minor. They're not, but They're off and they make you sort of twist a little bit. Uh, atonality wasn't really used in music until uh, the end of the 19th century. Uh, great composers like Debussy used just a tiny bit of it, but it really didn't take off until great composers like Bela Bartok and people like that began to use atonality to just at the end of pretty chords give the music a little twist because this is when the great wars were happening and people were genuinely unhappy. And the second thing I'm doing, other than using these atonal notes together, I'm playing them fast, which gives you that, oh, something is coming that I don't like. Also, music can be well, do you know what onomatopoeia is? Have you heard that word yet? Onomatopoeia. Yeah. 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 Have. Great. Yes. Onomatopoeia is uh, that which describes a word in that humans use that sounds like what it's supposed to sound like in nature, like swish. Yes. Uh, swish is an onomatopoeic word. Now. You, music is also uh, onomatopoeic. Um, no one is saying swish, but if I play this. Is that what is what mood does that uh, bring into your thoughts? I'm gonna just call on kids whose hands are up because it'll be sure. easier to hear them. Um, we got a lot of the same hands. Any different hands going? Well? Okay, we'll go with what we have. Did you have your hand up, Hunter? No, Molly. Like calming. calming. Um, like happy or cherry. Happy or cherry. Um, cheerful. Cheerful. Like a garden. Like a garden. Very interesting. Now that is, here's a concrete image, like a garden. Yes. Keep going with that. Well, I mean, if you uh, if you let your thoughts just drift, and I keep playing this, here's a slight you know, minor variation on it. But if I back up here into the major, what kind of scenes float into your mind? Hey, yes. Um. Like an ocean, okay. Like the waves in the ocean. All right. Did you want to keep going with the garden or any scenes? No, just any any of those anything that this music brings into your mind. Sure. Anything that brings into your mind. Yes. Um, I was going on with the garden. Yeah. Butterflies or birds flying around. Butterflies or birds flying around it. Yes, sir. The beach. The beach. What like what kind of image at the beach? Sand castles, Molly. Like in a greenhouse. I was thinking my own garden. I took pictures last night 
And when I left the house yesterday, my daffodils weren't open. And as I got home, they were open. But then when you changed to minor for a minute and it was still coming, it made me think of the rainstorm that passed gently over and got the daffodils mm -hmm. all wet. Yes, Haley. That one there. Yes. So you see how a little bit of music can really uh, bring uh, mental images into people's imaginations. You who uh, This is music that I use in the Odyssey, and uh, it comes with, it's the ocean, calm ocean theme. You know, where it, the, the ships are just, the, these are old ships with sails and whatnot, are just slowly drifting. Uh, be calmed where there's no wind. And this motif uh, tends to uh, evoke that kind of feeling. It's calm, it's flat, it could be a garden with butterflies fluttering around it. Yeah, all those are really interesting ideas. Uh, and they come without my telling you what it's meant to mean. But because it's music, you know. Does this make sense so far? Yes. Yeah. Here's another ocean theme that I use in the Odyssey, but this is slightly different. Here's this one. That's probably similar to the other motif, but it's slightly different, or it's meant to be. What does that music tell you that is different from this business? Anything? Stella. I could not hear her. I can't hear yeah, her. Yeah, she um, was saying that it's they're moving along but there is a storm off in the distance approaching <laughs> great um, great, great answer yes like yep yeah, um another person said emily said like it's turning in tonight and everything's calming down but then it's going to start up again lexi very calming, very calming. um shannon Oh, like when people are at a campfire, passing time. That's I kind of experienced it as traveling time, like you're moving to your next destination. It's how I was feeling it. Molly. Your family's coming, you're just like settling in. Oh, like your family's coming and you're just settling in. And we've got two more. Yes. Kind of like a forest, like a quiet forest. Like birds chirping. Okay, like a quiet forest and birds chirping and like um some kind of big wave or danger is just starting to come. So, some kind of what? Like wave or danger. Oh, some kind of wave or danger is coming from a ways away and is sort of heading toward you. Fascinating. Yes, there, there is something slightly more foreboding about this motif. Maybe it's just those notes at the bottom or the way the high notes interact, but it's not as quite as comforting as and so when you play music you'll you'll learn that whoever wrote the music had a lot of these ideas at work and the last one i'll play for you is uh when you listen to the odyssey you'll Come upon a scene called the Lotus Eaters. Lotus Eaters is a funny scene, and this is the music that I uh, I play during this particular scene. I urge you kids to listen to the Odyssey. The music it goes on and on and on, and some of it's on Celtic harp. Uh, and so, when you listen to it, if you do, or any of my other stories that you have at your school, you'll know now that Mr. Bodkin is making this music to try to add just a little bit to the story so that you can feel it more. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Bakken. Yeah. We are so appreciative. Thank you.
So we are oh, my pleasure. Here. Nice to meet you all. Your answers were fabulous. Thank you. Oh, for aren't they great kids? Yes. 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 And I, I wanted to just say thank you because our fifth graders, we got a late start in band. They've had three band practices. They're about to have their fourth one this Friday. And sixth grade's been troopers coming in on Fridays when we didn't have school. The district bust them in. But they've been doing a lot of work figuring out what the stories are to the music they're working. So this was a pretty, pretty great connection for them, I think, of what we've been doing. Yeah. This is so great. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so at this point, the students, where am I going, you guys? I feel like I'm in a movie. Um, <laughs> very fancy. Okay. <laughs> At this point, the kids have to go back to their classrooms because it's time to head out. So I'm going to release them and then chat with you for a minute, Ad, so I make sure we're all set. Is that okay? We'll be here and we'll be waiting for you. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, everybody. Miss Aranita, would you like them to stack chairs or? No, no. I'll take okay. the chairs, guys. Um, will you take their names though and either keep them or put them in the recycling bin on the way out? Cool. So I don't have to do that. Uh, you see if I jump back in that one if I log out and then jump back in this Zoom link in my office? Okay. All right. We'll see you there. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to stick around the waiting room for a little bit. Let's see. Thanks for another good day's work. Oh, you bet. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Interesting talking about the music. You know, that's a. Uh, it's hard. I mean, you know, you have a, a music background, but um. Oh, let's see. It looks like they cut out. Okay. Um, but like knowing exactly what chords things are and stuff, I guess these kids also don't know like a, what a mixolydian mode is and Dorian and stuff like that. They're, They're just learning to honk away on their instruments yeah. in band. Yeah. 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 But they can still, you know, listen for whatever the composer is trying to accomplish unless he's writing a march or something. Uh, Let's record this. Okay. This exit conversation. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh. Sun's coming out. You know. Still mama in the mood you I'm not here. Yeah. Mama in the mood I should write a book. Mama in the moochie. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, All right, let's see. Boom, boom. Oh man! Yeah. Ah. Crank it away. So, what do you do the rest of your day, Dad? I lean back in my chair, fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. I wish I weren't. I wish uh, that I, I hadn't given up scotch for the week. <laughs> I bet you do. Yep. I bet you do wish that. I do. Did I leave those uh, those beers in your fridge? Did you did you down those things? I didn't drink any beers. They're still in the fridge, or else they're down in the closet. Oh, I know. I into the beers. Yeah, man. Scotch. Hey, left a bunch of stuff in our uh, in our closet. You're welcome to, you know, export it if you need to. There's uh, they're all down there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it's not going to be not going to be enjoyed. Oh, no, no. My beer days are just. Don't like it anymore. Yeah, it's funny. 
Not even a good hoppy, super cold beer do I really enjoy anymore. Oh, God, that's my bread and butter right there. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll lose a taste for it, too, as I get older. It just look at it like unnecessary carbs, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, I'm recording this whole thing. Whatever. I'll just cut out what we trim what we don't use. So you tell know, me more about Florida. Why don't I? Okay. I want to stop recording.